Good evening aspirants, welcome to Daily News Analysis brought to you by Shankara Ace Academy. Today's date is 9th August 2024. Displayed here are the list of topics that we are going to discuss today. Now let us get into the discussion. So guys, today we are going to discuss three important articles from the newspaper. Now look at the first article. It talks about alternate dispute resolution mechanism in India. The news is that India's Attorney General or Venkataramani has complained about the Arbitration and Conciliation Act. He says that this act needs some updates to improve the out-of-court dispute resolution mechanism. There were recent controversies such as Finance Ministry Advisory which recommended against arbitration for high-value disputes. So what is alternate dispute resolution process? So in this video, we are going to discuss the various ADR process and their basics. Now let us get into the discussion. Firstly, let us understand what is alternate dispute resolution. See, it refers to methods used to resolve disputes without going to court. It includes techniques like mediation, arbitration, conciliation and negotiation. In this process, a third neutral party will help the disputing parties to reach an agreement. So, ADR is faster, less formal and usually cheaper than traditional court processes. So, this makes it an effective way to settle conflicts in more amicable and efficient manner. So, this is the alternate dispute resolution process. Now, there are many types of ADR mechanism. The first one is arbitration. It is a formal process where the dispute are resolved by an arbitrator whose decision is usually binding and final. It is less formal than court process and allows limited judicial intervention. So, this is about arbitration. The next is conciliation. See, it involves a conciliator who helps the parties to reach mutual agreement. Unlike arbitration, the conciliator's suggestions are not binding on the parties unless they are accepted by the both disputing parties. Right. Now, the third one is mediation. A mediator facilitates negotiation between the parties to help them reach a common resolution. So, the mediator does not impose a decision on the parties but assist in communication and settlement. Then there is Lok Adalat. It is informal forum for resolving cases efficiently and its decisions are final and binding. Next, negotiation. It is a direct informal process where the parties discuss their issues to reach a settlement without third party intervention. So, these are the five types of alternate dispute resolution mechanism in India. Now, let me give an example to understand this better. Imagine two neighbors A and B. They have disagreement over the boundary of their properties. Instead of taking the issue to the court, which can be time consuming and expensive, they decide to use the alternate dispute resolution mechanism. So, they meet with a mediator who is a neutral third party who listens to both sides and helps them to come to a mutual agreement. So, in this way, they resolve the issue quickly and maintain a good relationship without need for a lengthy legal battle in the court. So, this is the basic of alternate dispute resolution. Now, what are the advantages of ADR? First one is confidentiality. The disputes here are resolved privately without going to court. They are cost effective. Generally, they are cheaper and faster litigation compared to court process. They have flexibility which means the procedures are more adaptable to both parties. It brings out creative solutions and offers scope for innovative resolutions. It allows the involvement of experts relevant to the dispute. So, these are important advantages of ADR. Now, let us see the status of ADR in India. The Legal Service Authorities Act which was implemented in 1987 and the Arbitration and Conciliation Act in 1996 provide a legal framework for ADR mechanism in India. The Arbitration and Conciliation Amendment Bill was introduced in 2021. See, this bill addresses the issues related to misuse of arbitration and it aims to enhance the credibility and efficiency of arbitration proceedings by introducing stricter rules, checks and balances. The Mediation Bill which was introduced in 2021. This bill aims to formalize and regulate the mediation process including the accreditation of mediators, establishment of mediation council to oversee and standardize the mediation practices. So, this is about Mediation Bill 2021. Now, let us see some way forward for alternate dispute resolution in India. We have to strengthen the legal framework for ADR by updating the existing laws and introducing new regulations to make ADR process more efficient and accessible. Increasing awareness and education about ADR. So, we have to increase the public awareness about the benefits of ADR and integrating the ADR into education. 
there should also be integration with judiciary encouraging courts to refer suitable cases to adr mechanism and ensuring proper coordination between judiciary and adr institutions will reduce the burden on courts providing specialized training for mediators arbitrators and other adr professionals to ensure that they are well equipped to handle the disputes effectively by focusing on these areas india can further enhance the effectiveness and reach of alternate dispute resolution process so in this discussion we have seen the basics of adr mechanism what are the advantages of adr the status of adr in india and some way forward about adr for india with this let us conclude this discussion and move to the next topic now look at this article recently the madras high court case highlighted the challenges of relying solely on dna evidence for conviction so in this context let us discuss about dna profiling the basics of it the advantages regarding dna profiling and issues associated with it firstly what is dna profiling see dna profiling is a method used to identify individuals based on their unique dna patterns think of it as a biological fingerprint it is different for every person on earth except for identical twins imagine there is a crime scene where a suspect dna is needed scientists collect a sample of dna from the crime scene like a hair or a drop of blood then they compare this dna sample with the dna of potential suspect if the dna from the crime scene matches the dna of one of the suspects it helps in identifying the person involved in the crime so this method is highly accurate and it is widely used in the forensic science paternity tests and genetic research now let us see the important advantages of dna profiling the first one is it is highly accurate DNA profiling provides a highly accurate method of identifying individuals making it a reliable tool in forensic investigations and legal proceedings it helps in solving crimes by matching dna's from crime scenes with the suspects so it potentially identifies criminals who might otherwise remain undetected dna profiling also help to acquit individuals who are wrongfully accused or convicted of crimes by proving that they were not involved in the crime it assist in identifying missing persons and unidentified bodies providing closure to families it is also used to establish biological relationship in paternity test and other family disputes it is also used in genetic research so these are important advantages of dna profiling now let us see the issues associated with it firstly the privacy concerns dna profiling involves collecting and storing personal genetic information which raises concerns about privacy and misuse of data unauthorized access or leaks of dna data can lead to breaches of personal privacy next is potential for misuse dna profiles could be misused for discriminatory practices a wrongful profiling particularly if they are sensitive genetic information and if it is used without consent the next is accuracy and errors while dna profiling is highly accurate errors can occur due to contamination of samples human error in handling or technical issues with the testing procedures so such errors can lead to false positives or false negatives so this can impact the crime investigation lastly legal and ethical issues associated with it there are legal and ethical questions about how dna profiles should be used in criminal investigations and in court proceedings issues include consent the right to genetic privacy and the potential for genetic discrimination so these are important issues associated with dna profiling so in this discussion we have seen the basics of dna profiling what are the advantages of it and what are the issues associated with it with this let us conclude the discussion and move to the next topic Now look at this article in India MSME sector plays a crucial role in the economy it helps to create new business and self employment opportunities without requiring a lot of money the ministry of msme and the government of india supports and encourages the growth of this sector by offering various schemes and programs so in this discussion we are going to see various initiatives taken by indian government to promote msme sector the msme sector contributes approximately 30% of india's gdp MSMEs are the second largest employer in India after agriculture so they provide employment to around 110 million people in India MSMEs also contribute about 48% of India's total export so it also plays a major role in country's exports India has over 63 million MSMEs out of which 99% are micro enterprises so inside MSMEs micro enterprises are more than medium and small enterprises 51% of msmes are located in rural areas and 49% are located in urban areas so these are some basic facts about msme now let us see the key initiatives taken by indian government to promote msme sector the first one is prime minister's employment generation program pmegp 
This scheme provides financial assistance to individuals to set up new micro enterprises, particularly in rural and semi urban areas. So, this generates employment opportunities. The next one is Credit Guarantee Fund Trust for MSME. This scheme offers credit without the need for collateral or third party guarantee. So, this encourages banks and financial institutions to provide loans to small business. Another important scheme is MSME Champion Scheme. This program focuses on modernizing MSMEs, reducing waste and enhancing competitiveness. It includes components like ZED, that is Zero Defect, Zero Effect certification to promote quality and sustainability in order to reduce waste and supports innovation. Another important scheme is Sfruti, scheme of fund for regeneration of traditional industries. It is launched to revitalize traditional industries and make them competitive. This scheme promotes cluster development by providing financial and technical support to artisans and entrepreneurs who are involved in traditional craft. The next important scheme is Aspire, a scheme for promotion of innovation, rural industries and entrepreneurship. Aspire scheme aims to set up incubation centers and technology centers to support innovation and entrepreneurship in rural and agro-based industries. Another important scheme for MSME sector is RAMP program, raising and accelerating MSME performance, shortly called as RAMP. This scheme aims to promote the performance of MSMEs over 5 years, focusing on market access, formalization and improving competitiveness. Another important scheme related to MSMEs are Mudra loans. Under Mudra scheme, government provides loans up to 20 lakh to small entrepreneurs, helping them to expand their business without the need for collateral. So, these are important initiatives taken by central government to promote MSME sector. Now, let us see the challenges faced by MSME. The first one is lack of skilled labor. MSME usually operates in niche area that require specialized skill. The lack of skilled manpower makes it difficult for MSMEs to adopt new technologies and innovation. Then, lack of finance. One of the primary reasons for this is a lack of collateral or credit history. A bad credit score can make it difficult for these enterprises to obtain loans. They also face challenges in accessing credit due to high interest rate, complex documentation requirements. So, lack of finance is one of the important challenges faced by MSME in India. The next thing is market access. It is really challenging to access market if a country has large domestic market. MSMEs often struggle to penetrate existing supply chains and distribution networks which are already dominated by large enterprises. So, market access is another important challenge for MSME. Accessing international market is also not easy for MSMEs. This is due to lack of information, resources and technical expertise. Export procedures can be complex and time consuming which add to the difficulties faced by MSMEs. So, these are some important challenges related to MSME. You can use these points in main answer. With this, let us see some way forward for MSME sector. The first one is access to finance. Improve access to affordable credit for MSMEs by simplifying loan procedures and enhancing financial inclusion. Next, skill development. Provide targeted training programs to enhance the skill of MSME workers and entrepreneurs. Next, technology adoption. Encourage the adoption of modern technology and digital tools to improve productivity and competitiveness. Next, about market access. Facilitating better access to domestic and international markets through e-commerce platforms and export incentives can boost the exports by MSMEs. Next, regulatory simplification. Simplifying the compliance procedures and reducing the regulatory burdens can make it easier for MSMEs to operate. So, these are some of the way forward points for MSME sector. So, in this discussion, we have seen the basic facts about MSMEs, what are the important initiatives for MSMEs, challenges and way forward. So, with this, let us conclude this discussion and move to the MCQ related to this topic. Consider the following statements. Genetic Engineering and Appraisal Committee works under the Ministry of Science and Technology. The government has allowed genetically modified plants without cumbersome genetically modified organism under the regulation of Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee. So, which of the above statements are correct? The correct answer is option B. Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee works under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. So, the first option is incorrect. Look at the second question. The principles of party autonomy is most closely associated with which of the following dispute resolution method? This is a previous year prelims question. The correct answer is option B, arbitration. Now, look at another MCQ question. Consider the following statements regarding MSME sector in India. The MSME sector in India is governed by Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Ministry of MSME implements the Udyog Aadhaar registration for MSMEs in India. The credit guarantee fund scheme for micro and small enterprises was launched to provide 
collateral free credit to MSME sector. So which of the statements given above are correct? The correct answer is option B, 2 and 3 only. The statement 1 is incorrect. The MSME sector in India is governed by Ministry of MSME, not the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. So there is a separate Ministry of MSME. The statement 2 is correct and 3 is also correct. So the correct answer is option B. With this, we have come to the end of the discussion. If you like the video, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.